The following video is produced by University of Vermont Extension. For more information, visit uvm.edu slash extension. Roger Rainville is tending a fire that's heating one of the buildings on his farm. The pellets he's using are local. So local, in fact, that Rainville made them himself in the next room out of switchgrass that he grew. It's nothing out of the ordinary for the farmer, who has spent most of the past decade trying to figure out how to grow his own energy. I think with the switchgrass, there's no question that it could be feasible once we set up properly. Rainville is a longtime collaborator with the University of Vermont and spends his time growing and experimenting with a variety of crops. His work gives researchers valuable information about how those crops react on a working farm. We've got like three quarters of an acre of switchgrass we initially put in, Sid did, and uh, then last year he put in an, uh, an acre of uh, switchgrass. And Reed's Canary, we grow that here anyways, to feed the cows. The switchgrass you pelletized earlier made better pellets. Rainville is working with Sid Bosworth, an agronomist with UVM Extension, who is researching the potential for using grass as energy in Vermont. This is uh, research looking at perennial grasses, not harvested for hay, but harvested for biomass, for energy. Bosworth has been testing various sites around the state to determine the ability of different grasses to grow in different environments. And this is actually an uh, ecotype from Pennsylvania. Um, it's performed very well in this site, which is a well-drained sandy soil. It has not performed well on our uh, more poorly drained soils. So I'm, I'm not sure how much promise it has you know, for Vermont. The research is comparing a number of factors, from soil and land management practices to climate differences between the sites. The study will look at everything, from what the best type or mix of grasses is for Vermont to how much they will yield. You can see these grasses are very stemmy, which I think would be an advantage for biomass. Uh, the, usually the stemmier it is, the less ash there is. It's, a, it's more like wood. The last part of the process is to turn the grass into pellets and see how well they burn. That's where Rainville comes in. We were accustomed to pelletizing some softer material like sunflower meal, canola meal, and we even tried, you know, pelletizing some manure and whatever, but switchgrass and, and reeds canary is a little trickier. Uh, so we're, we're kind of learning as we're trialing this also. A couple of years into the study, and some of the grasses are reaching their full maturity, when they'll give their maximum yield. Some have grown well, and some haven't. And there are aspects of how and when to harvest that Bosworth thinks could have a significant impact on how well the grasses pelletize and burn. One of the challenges with, with the grasses is they they accumulate a lot more minerals, and so they have a higher ash content than wood does. So uh, for a homeowner, that means emptying the ash box a lot more often. There are some stoves that it probably is not suited for. But the uh, industry is coming around. I'm starting to see more boilers and, and stoves that can accommodate these alternative biomass sources. There have been some challenges with the equipment. Some of the grass seems to bind together better during the pellet making process, and the pellet machine itself continues to need fine tuning. We're able to get it to make pellets, so we know that you know it does work making pellets. I think things need to be addressed with that piece of equipment. Uh, I think once it's addressed properly, I think it'll work good. So these would be similar in size and shape as wood pellets that you can buy for a wood stove. However, I do want to caution that many wood stoves cannot handle these grass pellets because of the ash content. Some of the studies have indicated that harvesting the grass later in the season could help cut down on that ash content. For a farmer like Rainville, looking to grow his own energy, grass grown on unused or marginal land could be a cheap alternative to the sunflower pellets he's currently heating with. Sunflower meal is worth $500 a ton for feeding the cows, so it's real high protein. So if we have an alternative that works good to heat with, with pellets, and we can do it with the switchgrass or the reeds canary, we'll definitely do that. 
Rainville will continue to grow, pelletize, and burn the grasses, helping Bosworth find out which ones grow best and the best way to manage them. It's a long-term process as the grasses need to produce for at least 10 years to make the effort economically viable. For now, aside from the high ash content, the grass pellets themselves are proving that they can compete with established alternatives. I know we fill the hopper up with 40 pounds of switchgrass or 40 pounds of wood pellets or, and it runs, you know, like 12 hours on that 40 pounds, both. So that we figure the consistency is, is quite the same and we're keeping the building at the same, roughly the same temperature. So it tells me that without doing all the scientific aspect of it, it tells me that we're burning pretty consistent as far as temperature wise with the wood pellets. Although these are only the initial observations and not a scientific study of the pellets, if Rainville's results are typical, then growing grass for energy could make a lot of sense in Vermont. I think within the next year or two, we're gonna have a lot of good information as far as uh, being able to provide to farmers. In a few years, after a few more growing seasons and more time to investigate, Bosworth will have the numbers and figures to go along with his work. For now though, he and his partners will keep doing what they've been doing. Growing, studying, and sharing information as it becomes available. In Alberg, I'm Rebecca Gollin with Across the Fence.